Hello there, hunt players. So today I got something special for you guys. It is 100 tips for hunt showdown. This is for beginners and experienced players. And yeah, without any further talking, let's get straight into it because it's gonna be pretty long. It took me two whole weeks to actually create this, so I would like it if you make a comment and actually write down if you like these tips or not. Yeah, it was pretty busy, so let's get straight into it. For tip number one, Mr. Cherry or the summons, the daily and weekly, just any kind of quest basically. You don't need to actually collect this. So let's say if I got the 2500 XP one, I don't need to collect this. This will be collected automatically. Same for the quests. Tip number two, in case you actually want to prestige, don't forget to complete your library. Basically go over here and claim and do that with all of these same with the guns because if you don't do it you will actually lose the blood bonds you get from this now for tip number three don't hesitate to either take the shot or to take it slowly sometimes it's better to wait until you get a more clear shot Tip number four, always look at your surrounding for flying ducks, crows, or listen to the sound of the horses. That means that there are actually players somewhere around you. As you can see, there they are. Now for tip number five, there's actually two ways you can see a clue. One way is that it's sealed like this. That means nobody has picked it up yet. And the other way is when it is basically broken but that means somebody has been here now i did it but it is also broken like this whenever somebody else took the clue all right so for tip number six is the red glowing clue as you can see it's white now and i got these two friendly people helping me to show when it's red so if they stand closer a bit they should now you can see that it's red you can see the range as well and if you heard closely you can actually hear a different sound when the clue is red as well i'm gonna replay the sound for you once more when it's white and when it's red now for tip number seven is that the crows and also the ducks actually have a flight path so if i run into them from this angle they'll run that way if i run into them from the left they'll fly to the right so they always go in the opposite direction now for tip number eight let's say i'm getting chased from that way what i can do is i can throw a decoy over here and the ducks will fly the opposite direction so you can basically use it as a decoy, as a distraction. And basically let people think that you're actually coming their way. So for tip number 9, I'm gonna use some footage out of one of my games I had on the live stream. To actually show you or let you hear the difference between a headshot and a normal shot. Sadim. 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 Now for tip number 10, you can actually open up barricaded doors. Just have to remove the bar and you can actually barricade it again by pressing F again. But there's actually another way to open up these barricaded doors. That's by shooting the barricade over here. Now keep in mind, if you shoot the barricade, they or you are unable to barricade the door again. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna try to do a wall bang over here. As you can see, the barricade is gone and the door is open. Tip number 11, how to open up barricaded doors efficiently. 
can see it's barricaded. It's basically with a hammer or an axe. It only takes two hits. With both a hammer and an axe. You can also do it with your normal melee, but that will take a couple more hits. Now for tip number 12, that's how to open up doors quietly. That is if you crouch and you open the door. Tip number 13, how to open up doors fast. Now how to open up doors quickly is basically just melee the door. Now for tip number 14, every single weapon has a muzzle flash. But this does not include silencers. I'm gonna show it off with a chaos bomb. To indicate some shots. So the chaos bomb will also have the muscle flash. Now for tip number 15. You can actually drop these gates down by shooting at the lever. This also works with melee. You can also throw a fuse on it. And yes, for the crazy people, you can also throw a choke bomb on it. It doesn't have to be on the lever, but if it explodes, it drops down as well. Tip number 16. The damage on teammates is actually reduced, the shooting damage. But the explosive damage is actually all of the damage. So the explosive damage is not reduced. For tip number 17, whenever you hear gunshots on the map, just look at where you can hear the gunshots from. Open the map and you can see it's from this direction. Alright, for tip number 18, that is has to do with the ammo boxes, the tool boxes and the health packs. So when a health pack is not being used yet, it will be fully opened. When it's used once, it will be like half open. And when it has three charges done, or two charges basically, and it has no more, like you can't use it anymore, it's fully closed. For the ammo box, uh, it's the other way around. <laughs> so they're basically closed, if nobody picked it up yet. They are halfly opened, like this, when they used one charge. And they're fully opened when there's no charges left. Same as with the normal ammo. So the normal ammo and the special ammo is the same thing. Now for the toolboxes, they are fully closed when nobody took any charges. When somebody took one charge, it will have like one side open. And if they have both charges gone, it will be fully open like this. So basically ammo and toolbox are gonna open once you pick up something and medkit is gonna be closed once you take a charge now for tip number 19 bear traps they always spawn closed so whenever you see a bear trap which is open that means an enemy hunter did this for tip number 20 you can actually put a bear trap into a alert trip mine as long as you put the alert trip mine in first. Now for tip number 21, there's actually no bullet drop, there's only bullet travel speed. Now for tip number 22, the health bars. So a big health bar is 50 health and a small one is 25. Every single hunter they got 150 health. For tip number 23, the bullet travel speed. As we said in tip number 21, there is no bullet drop. So if you want to know how far your bullets go or how fast, you have to check right over here at the muzzle velocity. Tip number 24, you cannot heal while you're poisoned. You can only heal while poisoned, while the boss is actually being banished. For tip number 25, if you get hit, your aim will actually go up. This counts for both grunts hitting you or when you take a shot. For tip number 26, throwing knives and throwing axes actually don't need any stamina to be thrown. 
they will still deal the full amount of damage. Now for tip number 27 is you can actually block the extraction. So all you have to do is stand nearby. This is actually the range. As you can see that's the max range as well. Can you stand back a bit? As you can see this is the max range of the extraction. Which is actually pretty close by. Which is actually crazy. This will actually deny people from getting out. Now for tip number 28, the extraction timer will actually reset once you block it. So once people go outside of the range, the timer will start back from 30 seconds. Tip number 29, whenever an ally is downed in the extraction zone, the timer will actually stop. As you can see, the timer is now fully reset to 30 seconds. Tip number 30, whenever one teammate runs out of the extraction zone. No matter how far he goes, the timer will still go off to zero seconds. Because there were some trolls in the start of Hunt. And they would just block his teammate from extraction. But no matter how far you are, the timer will always continue. And now for tip number 31. If you actually stand close to the extraction while there is an enemy over there, you can hear that it's very loud as well. It also is with the wagon extraction, the horse will actually start to cry, if that's the word. As you can see, the black smoke is gone, and the extraction is very silent. Tip number 32. Whenever the game starts, it will last one hour. But the moment that actually the last bound extracted, the timer will go to 5 minutes left no matter if the timer was on 10 minutes 30 minutes it will always fall down to 5 minutes left whenever the contract expires and you did not extract yet your hunter dies tip number 33 what will actually happen when the timer runs out and you're not out of the seconds for extracting your hunter will actually survive because you actually stood in the extraction zone. Tip number 34. Whenever you pick a lantern, it's always on. But you can also put the lantern off by pressing X. You can now throw it without it being exploding basically. But if it's on and you throw it, it sets on fire. Tip number 35. Whenever you get hit by a sticky bomb, you can actually get rid of it. All you have to do is stop the bleeding. You have to make sure that you completely stop the bleeding, because just taking it once, it does not work. Now for tip number 36, you can actually shoot consumables out of the air, like lanterns or dynamite. Now for tip number 37, if the aim helper is actually turning white, it will not deal damage to you. But if it will turn red, like right now, that means you're in a blast radius and you can actually damage yourself. Now for tip number 38, if you actually want to throw your grenade and your aim helper retreats, you will have to throw it, otherwise you will deal damage to yourself. Throw it now. Now for tip number 39, everything you do in hunt can be heard. Zooming in. Running on the grass. Running on metal. Running on wood. And yes, even reloading. And indeed, you can also hear other people healing. Now for tip number 40, you can actually wall bang. Tip number 41, 
Only a nitro and long ammo can actually penetrate metal, like this roof for example. So for tip number 4 to do, let's say you just hopped into a match. And the dinner is ready or just whatever. You have to leave. You don't want to leave the mission. No. So, as I said before, the match, they last one hour. So, it took me like 30 seconds to actually get here. But yes, we can extract right away as well. Tip number 43. You can actually pass bottles or chains or hooks by crouching on it. This is how it sounds when you just walk over it. And this is how it sounds when you crouch. For tip number 44, you can actually have different crosshairs if you are moving in a different stance. This is crouching, standing up, and walking. Now for tip number 45, it's the same as tip number 44, but this does not include shotguns. The crosshair of the shotguns will always stay the same. Tip number 46 is gun points can have double clues. For example, over my Discord in the Hunt Guides section, uh, link is down in the description below if you would like to join. So basically the names, or the yellow names, are actually the double clue gun points. For example, on the Sol map, we have Weeping Stone Mill, Pelican Island Prison, First Testimonial Church. On the Lawson Delta map, we have the Lawson Station, Fort Garmic, and the Gulls Prison. And on the Stillwater Bayou map, we have Port Reeker, Blanchet Graves, and Healing Water Church. This will also be updated when there is new maps releases and everything like that. For tip number 47, you can actually release your ladder immediately. If you press spacebar. Now for tip number 48, you can actually move while you're still in the air. Now for tip number 49. Antidote shots, stamina shots, and regeneration shots. They actually count up. So right now I didn't use any, so I got zero seconds on my stamina shot. I used one. And on the bottom left you can see five minutes. I used another one. And you'll see 10 minutes. I used another one. And it will say 15 minutes. So basically, whenever you use a stamina shot or whatever, it is always counting up towards the seconds left or minutes left that you have right now. Now for tip number 50, you can actually use a dynamite stick as a sort of a smoke screen to actually revive your teammates. So let's say our teammate is right over here and there's people at the door. As you can see, there's a bit of a smoke screen right now. So right now I have time to actually revive my teammate. Tip number 51. Extinguishing fire on teammates. You can either throw a choke bomb, that will put him out immediately. But if you wait a couple of seconds until a big fire is gone, then only the body will be burning. And right now only the body is burning, so what we can do is just tap F, the revive button basically, and he was put out. So this is a good way if, for example, enemy hunters are shooting us and put him on fire and I just want to get him out of the fire real quickly and I have no shock bombs. Now for tip number 52, contraband weapons and their scopes. Contraband weapons are the weapons from actually you loot up from other hunters or the free hunters and their scope will always be cracked. So for tip number 53, always face the way they actually think people are coming from. When taking a clue, because as you can see, we cannot move anymore left and right. Only between a 45 degree angle, approximately. So for tip number 54, there's actually 12 players in any game mode. Quick play or bounty hunt. Now what you can do is if you know that there's 12 players in a match and I'm playing solo in this bounty hunt. And there's 
a dead body over here and a dead body over here. That means there's 9 players left throughout the game. I heard gunshots at the start of the game, so that means minus 1, minus 2, depending if it's a duo or a solo. So that leaves it up to 7 or 8 people. And like a second ago, I heard gunshots as well, so that leaves it up to minus 1 or minus 2 as well. This is a handful way to actually know if there are some more people throughout the game or not. Tip number 55. Move fast, but also slowly when it's needed. For tip number 56, whenever you enter a compound, make sure to read it carefully. For broken windows, open doors, or use medkits, or anything like that. This will indicate that there's actually enemies over here, or that there was enemies over here. For tip number 57, you can actually hear it when other hunters nearby are actually preparing their consumable. For example, on a dynamite, you can hear the fuse, like right here. And for example, on a hive bomb, you can actually hear the glass shaking or the bottle shaking. For tip number 58, there's actually two ways of getting your health back once it's lost in a match. One is by banishing the boss. And number two is after the game itself. You can just buy this back with upgrade points. And you can even choose if you want a small bar or a big bar. So it's completely up to you if you either want to get your health bars back or you actually want to choose your health bars after the game in the main menu if you don't like to have a big bar in the end for example. For tip number 59, remember where med kits or ammo boxes are just in case you need them. Tip number 60, on how to heal properly. As I said in tip number 22, a small health bar is 25 HP and a big health bar is 50. Now the med kits, they heal 50 HP. The fatality shots, they heal 75. But the big fatality shots, they just get you to full health. So in this situation, I lost one big bar and one small bar. So you want to use a medkit? No, you can use a fatality shot. Tip number 61. You can actually see the enemy bounty with the lightning beam over here in dark side, the thunder. Or when you open up your map, you can see them as well. For tip number 62, you can actually kill enemies, but that does not mean that the hunter is actually completely dead. They are, in fact, completely dead once you throw fire on them. Either from a lantern or a firebomb. As you see over here, then this will happen. And once this fire is gone, that means that they actually completely burned out. So they actually have no way of getting back into the game. Or at least not get revived. Because, yeah, they can still be revived if his teammate actually got the bounty. Tip number 63. That's a tinted glass, as you can see right over there. Now, a good tip to do is if you're defending, like you're inside of this building for example, leave the glass on there as long as possible. But if you're attacking and somebody's in there, it's super hard to see them. And now when you shoot it, it's actually a bit easier to see if there's enemies over there. Tip number 64. Split the work while doing the boss. Have one guy doing the boss, and the second guy can just be or to look out for enemies. For tip number 65, you can actually stop your bleeding with a med kit. Now keep in mind this does not work with a fatality shot. Ow. Now for tip number 66, there's actually three different kinds of barrels. The green one, they'll have bees in them. The red ones, they're more likely like a grenade. They just explode. Then you have the yellow one. They will actually set on fire. Or they are actually fire. Let me call it that way. And then, last but not least... Oh, that was two of them. Okay. Last but not least, the B one. They will have bees in them. Obviously. For tip number 67, you can actually see it in tip number 66 as well. 
You can blow up these barrels instantly by throwing fire on them. No matter which barrel it is. If you want to shoot it, you have to shoot it twice, obviously. Now for tip number 68. If you have an alert trip mine and you put it right next to a red barrel, it'll actually one-shot people. Because the mine will actually trigger the red barrel and that will one-shot you. Tip number 69. Being on barbed wire, there's actually two ways of getting rid of barbed wire. One way is to walk through it. And that will actually get rid of it as well. I'm not gonna destroy any more because there's barely any hard wire. But what works as well is any melee weapon that cause of bleeding. Like the axe for example. Tip number 70. Frag bombs, they're actually not explosives. They actually bleed you. If you throw it on the ground. Or tip number 71, whenever you find a melee weapon out in the world, it's either an axe or a hammer or whatever, and you're actually charging up your attack, and if you want to cancel it, you can actually go into your dark side, and that way you will not drop the melee weapon. Or tip number 72, whenever you throw a lantern on top of a green barrel, what has bees inside, it will actually also kill the bees. Tip number 73, Bound Hunters while the boss is being banished. So once the Butcher is banished and you are being revived, you will basically spawn with all of your health bars, but you will not spawn with any health. For tip number 74, the trace actually works with the store. So, if you're unsure, for example, what kind of gun works with the Iron Devastator, we go to the store, we type in Iron Devs Devastator, and here we go. The Iron Devastator trait actually works with the Spectre, the Spectre Compact, and the Winfield Slate. For tip number 75, you can actually deny other hunters from looting this body or picking up his weapons by just burning them. And once they're burned out, well, you can say bye bye to other hunter looting this body and to their weapons. Now for tip number 76, learning gun sound. Now there's a very amazing website over here. I will put that in the description below as well. And also that website is also over on my discord in the hunt guys section. But what we can do over here is learning to gun sounds on different ranges. For example, the Bertie on 20 meters. Let's say a uppercut on 200 meters. And it can also be filtered with compact ammo, medium, long, shotgun, and special ammo. Now this website is very cool because it also has a quiz. You can play the sound. And everyone knows this, it's an aftermath. So that one's good. And it also has something special, which is the cache register locations over here. So we got the different maps over here, Stillwater Bayou, Boston Delta, and the Sol. For tip number 77, the unlock chain. So let's say I want to have more unlocks with the Winfield. I want to unlock the Winfield Vandal. Then it does not matter if I'm using the normal Winfield, the Marksman, the Silencer, uh, let's say the Vandal Strike for example. It is all family of the Winfield Rifle. That means whenever I get any XP with the Winfield, it counts towards this whole Winfield family. For tip number 78, the weapon XP. The last hit you do, so basically the killing blow, only that weapon will get the XP. For example, with over here, I will only get XP with my knife. Now for tip number 79, if you die, you will not lose any of the weapon XP you got from that particular game. For tip number 80, let's say I want to get more XP with my weapon. What I can do is melee a grunt or anything else with my weapon and that XP will actually count 
towards the weapon itself. Tip number 81. Weapons, they can actually stick out of buildings. Walls, doors, windows. So make sure that you are not zooming in the whole time when you're for example next to a wall. Because people can see your hands, your weapon and also some clothing if you have a long coat for example and you stand on top of a roof. You can see it hanging down the ceiling. For tip number 82, you can actually one shot people if they don't react fast enough with the poison trip mine and the concertina trip mine. First off, set up the poison. After that, you set up the concertina. Try and do it very close together though. Now let's say I'm an enemy hunter. I run through it. Because I reacted fast enough, I did not die. But trust me, you can do it and other people will die. If they're for example crouching in an open door or when vaulting. Very good way. So for tip number 83. The red wagon over here, that is always a supply point. For tip number 85, choke bombs can both get rid of the poison and fire as well. If you throw a choke bomb on it, we wait a few seconds and it explodes. The fire is gone already, but the poison will take a couple more seconds. But it can actually remove both. For tip number 86, when you throw a choke bomb on a barrel, Nothing will explode the barrel. Except if you have a wax dynamite stick or explosive ammo. For tip number 87, you can actually switch off your weapons or anything else in your inventory. But let's say I want to have my crown and king on number 2. I just go to my Chrono King, I hold 2, and it's switch position. This works for everything in your inventory. Tip number 88, poison bombs, they do not stack in damage. You can throw 2 in there, 3, 4, 5, the damage you get will always stay the same, as it's basically just one poison bomb. And for tip number 89, if you die, the stamina shot, regeneration shot, and the antidote shot, will actually still count. For tip number 90, when you're on fire, you can actually spread the fire on AI, hunters, and also other barrels. So whenever you walk past the barrel when you're on fire, you better be prepared to die. For tip number 91, fire damage will always start at the last health bar, even when dead bar has no health left. For tip number 92, there's actually a couple of ways to improve the Chaos Bomb. One way is to attach it to a grunt. That way he will actually start running. And the gunshots will not only be in one general direction. Now if we wait a second, this is the Chaos Bomb. What we can do as well, is whenever there is a silent moment, we can shoot ourselves as well, to make it even more realistic. Now for tip number 93, jumping over bear traps does not work. For tip number 94, never you get chased when you're at the extraction. Make sure to hide behind anything from the extraction, except for the wooden boxes. Because those things are actually bulletproof. For tip number 95, you can actually check your equipment in silent. When you just scroll through it and you move back to the in initial position, for tip number 96, so when you did not take a clue, of course the map is not grayed out. But when we take a clue, the map will be grayed out. And doesn't matter which other hunter or which other team actually takes a clue from this boss, they will all gray out the same way. For tip number 97, when there are some enemy hunters burning, you burn them for example or whatever, Make sure to put them out, if you did not loot them already. Because now you can actually still loot them. Now for tip number 98. So over my discord, links down in the description below. I got a channel dedicated to the hunt guides. Which is basically 
every single guide I could find. Like useful tips or basically all of the compounds with their name. Which is one of these tips as well with the double clues. Which are the yellow names basically. So these are getting updated as well. Once I find new and helpful stuff. Like for example the audio source in their distance. Like this is helpful guys. Make sure to come and check it out. I'll see you in the discord. For tip number 99. Only the supply points on land, so either the trading caravans or the, the red wagon, only they have a lantern on them. The boat, for example, that does not have a lantern on them. Alright guys, so last but not least, tip number 100 is how to get good gear for free. Now after every single game, you can get a free hunter. You have a free reshuffle and you can get a free hunter. Just click this hunter, free. Now what you can do is all of these weapons you can take them off either by hand you can just do it for the tools and consumables as well or what you can do as well is just dismiss hunter and your hunter will no longer be playable their equipment will be stored for future use yes yes that was basically the same as taking off every single item by hand or just clicking the dismiss button easy enough Alright guys, so that was all of the 100 tips. I definitely hope that you learned something, at least one thing, that would actually make this tip video so much worth it. But yeah, I definitely hope to catch you on the next one, because there is much more guides incoming as well. I hope you have a good day, good night, or a good morning. Bye bye.